Hello, we are going to teach you the fastest archery method known today with a bow and arrow. The fastest technique for rate of fire depends on the quantity of arrows shot, so this video will focus on the fastest technique for burst fire, shooting three arrows specifically, one by one, not simultaneously. When the quantity of arrows are increased significantly to about 15 or more, shooting off of quivers will be preferred. This is because there's a limit on how many arrows you can hold in your hands. This video will focus on the fastest technique for shooting specifically three arrows. This specific technique is inspired by historical sources of archery, but the focus of this video is the fastest archery technique, not how historically accurate it is. I also have Mac and Martin here, both are very experienced in this style of archery with powerful bows and accuracy. Thank you very much for the footages and permission. Please check them out at the end of the video. So let's break down the technique. First, let's start with the bow. For the choice of the bow, most bows are suitable for this technique. However, the best bows for the fastest technique avoids modern compounds and modern Olympic bows with arrow rests, modern sights, and stabilizers. These extra devices will slow you down and you don't want that when you want to speed shoot as fast as possible. The optimal bow here is a short and light bow without an arrow rest. Although long bows can be used as well, they are more cumbersome to move around with because this technique is usually combined with running or walking so a shorter bow is typically preferred. The ideal draw weight is something you can personally pull and shoot rapidly all day. That being said, very heavy draw weights can still be used with this technique, but your rate of fire will be more limited. For example, here's me shooting 125 pounds with this technique, but I'm shooting a lot slower, mainly because of the draw weight limitations. If your max draw weight is around 80 pounds, then it is recommended to use 40 to 50 pounds for this technique. It is recommended to have a knocking point marked on the bowstring instead of a brass knock. You can use tape or thread, and this is to prevent the knock from sliding up. For the choice of the arrow, any traditional arrows designed for the weight of the bow is good. The arrow knot can be of any design, but generally speaking, the wider the taper is, the easier it is to speed shoot, but standard knocks can still be used to shoot rapidly. You can make special knocks with a large gap that allow you to shoot and knock arrows rapidly, but they are not necessary with practice. Feathers is preferred, but veins can be used if you perform your katra. You can also have a wide variety of fletching designs, but generally speaking, two fletchings are the fastest because as long as they're glued in a consistent orientation, you can line them up in an arrow magazine without looking at it. With three fletches, you have to pre-rotate them before you shoot it, and that requires you looking at your knocks. Now, one other thing to note is you can hold the arrows by the knocks, especially if the knocks are flat, then you can just instinctively feel it without relying on the fletchings. This is specifically used by Mac to instinctively knock it without looking at the arrows, and he is able to speed shoot three fletchings with this technique. So now let's get into the stances. You can follow the standard traditional archery stances, but this technique allows a wide variety of stances and is often combined with fast movement with legs or on horseback. When it comes to your positioning, you can be quite flexible. You can be bending forward, leaning forward, going backwards. This technique is quite flexible in that context and you can shoot 360 degrees if needed. For the bow hand, this technique tilts the bow on the opposite side of the modern trad cant. So a right-handed shooter would tilt their left hand counterclockwise, while a left-handed shooter would tilt their right hand clockwise. Basically the opposite of modern trad. Now with heavier bows, this can cause injury if you are not trained in this uh, tilt. So be careful with heavy bows. In ideal conditions, the bow arm should give clearance to the string, but this is not always possible when shooting 360 degrees while on the move. Now let's get into the draw hand, which is the most important thing, and there are many variations, and it can be debatable which variation is faster. However, there are two main variations that are optimized for the fastest speed. 
Let's first talk about variation one of your draw hand. The first one is based on the Slavic draw from the book Arab Archery. According to the book, the Slavs have a peculiar draw which consists of locking the little finger, the ring finger, and the middle finger on the string hand, holding the index finger outstretched along the arrow, but the book does not mention if the arrows are held while using this draw or how the bow is canted or anything about the release for the Slavs. However, when you use the Slavic draw, your thumb is available to grip arrows in the draw hand so you can carry an arrow magazine. Mac prefers this technique and me as well. Um, one of the main advantages of this technique is you have a index finger that reliably provides a torque on the arrow so it keeps the arrow not falling off the shelf. This is especially important for heavy draw weights um, because you do not want to accidentally um, make the arrow fall off with a very heavy bow. With the lighter bows this is less of an issue. The arrow is placed on the opposite side of Olympic archery and from here the arrows are knocked on the string and you place your middle finger and ring finger on the string. The pinky is often ignored by speed shooters. Now the tilt is important here to prevent the arrow falling off but also your index finger applying that torque also helps preventing that arrow falling off. Now we're going to talk about variation 2. It's the same as variation 1 except the arrows are held in between your index and your middle finger. Martin prefers this technique. It is preferred to use two fletchings because you can easily um, put, it, put the arrow magazine on between your index and middle finger. You have more control with your thumb and index, but if your arrows are already two fletch, then, your, then this variation is more applicable. Which variation is faster? Well, that's quite debatable, um, but the difference is, is fairly small. Especially for a beginner, I recommend to try out both variations. Now, there are actually a lot more variations than this, including thumb draws and other types of techniques, but generally speaking, they are slower than the first two variations explained. For the fastest archery technique, the shortest draw length, say 7 inches, will give you the fastest recovery time, but it is generally agreed in the speed shooting community that you need to pull uh, to full draw, or almost full draw, of modern archery. For example, if your Olympic draw length is 28 inches, it is generally accepted that in the context of speed shooting, a 25 to 28 inch draw length is acceptable. You still need a decent amount of draw length to get the power from the bow. Finally, for the release, Saikatra is typically preferred to allow a wider range of arrow spines, but if you just want to have the fastest time ignoring accuracy completely, then no katra is used. So I hope you enjoyed this video about the fastest archery technique. This is not about who is the fastest archer, um, this is just the fastest technique. And I want to thank Mac and Martin in this video, and you can check them out at the links below since they both have YouTube channels. Thank you very much for contributing for this video.